In early 2026, Purple Line light rail vehicles began nighttime test runs on newly completed track segments in suburban Maryland. These movements are part of system testing as the project approaches its final construction phase. After years of delays caused by legal disputes, design changes, and construction challenges, the Purple Line is now targeting full service by the end of 2027. This video from On the Trains breaks down the current construction status, testing progress, and what still needs to happen before opening day. So where does the Purple Line actually stand today? Current construction progress. As of early January 2026, the Purple Line project stands at approximately 84 to 85% overall completion, reflecting consistent progress in the concluding stages of major construction. Track installation has reached 76 to 77%, with more than 148,000 feet laid out of the total 193,100 feet. The Prince George's County portion has achieved 100% track completion, enabling a shift in resources to the western segments. In Montgomery, County, track work was reported at about 79% as of late 2025, with full completion projected for spring 2026. Current activities highlight ongoing efforts across the corridor. Along Kenilworth Avenue, MD201, crews are continuing utility relocations, sidewalk installations, curb work, and driveway aprons through spring 2026. Following the reopening of Quintana Street around January 12, 2026, Quisada Road at Kenilworth Avenue will close for approximately one week to complete similar improvements, with pedestrian access maintained via signage. At the Connecticut Avenue station, work involves retaining wall construction, utility installations, and platform elements permitted on weekdays and weekends as needed. The Spring Street Bridge in Silver Spring remains closed until March 2026 for final elevated structure work, including pile driving for abutments. Other closures include Dixon Avenue and Bonifant Street until mid-January 2026 for track installation and partial impacts at the Silver Spring W. Amada Red Line station around mid-January. All 21 stations are under active construction, with platforms largely completed and complementary features advancing, 17 of 19 miles of new sidewalks built, 16 station canopies installed, and expansions to bike lanes ongoing. This allows prioritization of system integrations. Additional infrastructure, such as bridges over the Anacostia and Rock Creek, retaining walls and trail connections like the Capitol Crescent Trail, forecasted to reopen in spring 2026, supports multimodal goals. A key milestone was the full delivery of all 28 rail cars by November 2025, ahead of schedule. So the next question is how the trains are designed to operate on this line. Let's move on to the next section to learn more details about this line. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for daily train updates. Train design. The Purple Line vehicles manufactured by CAF in Spain and assembled in Elmira, New York. Each vehicle is 142 feet approximately 40 meters long, the longest in the U.S., and has five articulated sections for flexible travel on flat, elevated, and tunnel tracks. Designed for high capacity, each vehicle can carry 430 passengers, including 80 fixed seats, along with additional folding seat options, dedicated space for bicycles and wheelchairs, a low floor for easy boarding and alighting, and wide doors for a quick passenger movement. The interior design emphasizes functionality and comfort. Purple-toned seats, sturdy armrests and grab posts, an overhead LED display, push-button operated doors, and a driver's cabin equipped with cameras instead of traditional mirrors for improved safety and visibility. These features ensure efficient operation in the context of suburban public transport. Power supply relies on an extensive overhead wiring system, which has already been energized in completed sections for real-world testing. Initial trials have utilized a dedicated one-mile test track at the Glenridge Operation and Maintenance Facility since April 2025. The system's multimodal integration includes direct connections to the Metrorail red, green, and orange lines at multiple stations, as well as the MARC, Amtrak, and bus networks. Environmental and artistic elements highlight the technical framework, the aesthetic of the stations with their stained glass canopies and themed columns, such as the aviation motif near College Park Airport, the fish-friendly bridge design, and the route supporting the Capitol Crescent Trail. In the summer and December 2025, highlight practical details, including interior images from initial test runs and progress on station construction such as signaling, digital displays, signage, and paved platforms at locations like Beacon Heights. 
This technical platform, combining modern public transport with robust infrastructure, ensures the rail line operates reliably while prioritizing passenger experience and regional connectivity. So how do these systems perform outside the workshop? Testing phase. Dynamic testing entered an advanced phase in early 2026, focusing on operating the active power line with the energized overhead conductors on major sections of track. Beginning in January 2026, engineering teams conducted nightly tests between College Park UMD and Adelphi Road UMGC UMD stations from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. to assess complete electrical integration, drive systems under load, and signal interaction under real-world conditions. These tests included the periodic movement of light rail trains through intersections, assisted by police or traffic controllers for safety, with the potential for short delays for pedestrians and vehicles. Additional nighttime closures, such as at Emerson Place and Ellen Road, ensure controlled entry and exit while maintaining emergency routes. Parallel testing is continuing on other electrified rail sections, including the section from Veterans Parkway to College Park UMD, building on previous phases that began with day and night runs near New Carrollton and extended to College Park by the end of 2025. One of the first daytime mainline tests at Beacon Heights Station demonstrated smooth acceleration, automatic horn and announcement sequences during short runs, verifying onboard systems such as brakes and communications in a near-realistic operating environment. Throughout 2026, testing will be systematically expanded section by section as construction progresses, incorporating simulations of maximum speed, emergency braking procedures, and multi-vehicle operation to certify the entire corridor. This systematic approach allows for iterative adjustments, ensuring compatibility across diverse terrains such as ground-level tracks on campus and elevated crossings. The outlook remains focused on bringing the entire rail line into commercial operation by winter 2027, avoiding phased openings to ensure consistent safety and reliability. Community observations of train performance, whether through nighttime campus lighting or controlled daytime testing, indicate a shift from the construction phase to the operational completion phase. So far, we've covered the project in detail from construction progress to vehicles and testing. Next, let's step back and look at the bigger picture, including the original vision for the Purple Line and the challenges that slowed it down. Historical Development and Challenges The Purple Line project is an ambitious initiative to build a 16-mile, approximately 42 kilometers, light rail system, connecting Bethesda in Montgomery County with New Carrollton in Prince George County, with a total of 21 stations, 10 in Montgomery and 11 in Prince George. Designed to integrate with existing infrastructure, the route includes river crossings such as Anacostia and Rock Creek, underground sections such as the Plymouth Tunnel, and above-ground sections running through urban areas. Notably, the route coincides with the Capitol Crescent Trail, enhancing pedestrian and bike paths along the track. Additionally, the route passes through the University University of Maryland campus, where five stations will provide free service to students, fostering educational and community ties. Artistic elements further accentuate the terminals, including the stained glass roofs and aviation-themed pillars near College Park Airport, recognized as the world's oldest continuously operating airport. From the outset, the project has encountered significant obstacles that have delayed progress. Initially scheduled to open to passengers in 2022, delays have pushed the target to 2027 due to a series of hurdles. Legal disputes arose from environmental concerns and property disputes, including opposition related to a local golf course requiring route adjustments. Budget constraints led to reallocation of funds, while practical challenges such as relocating underground utilities, pipes, cables, and sewers required extensive extensive coordination. Community opposition centered on potential disruptions to residential areas, transportation, and green spaces, leading to modifications such as environmentally friendly bridge designs that allow for easier fish movement in waterways. These issues were exacerbated during construction, slowing progress in sensitive areas. By summer 2025, the Purple Line had reached roughly 50% completion, with large sections of track installed and significant progress on overhead catenary systems and station structures already visible along the corridor. The footage captures images of station structures under construction, including platforms with themed artwork, and underscores the rail line's potential to bypass DC and connect directly to the suburbs. This realistic perspective highlights how the project has evolved from conceptual plans into tangible infrastructure, despite obstacles, setting the stage for further progress without delving into current figures. With testing underway and construction nearing completion, the Purple Line is closer than ever to opening. What are your thoughts on this project?
share your opinions in the comments.